Hi, welcome to the podcast, Ease into Clarity. I'm Dr. Divi, family doctor turned intuitive coach, and I'm here to help you. In this podcast, we will learn mental techniques, emotional techniques, and spiritual techniques to change daily problems. So maybe it's your husband, your boss, your coworker, your kids, they're driving you crazy. You can email me any of your questions and I will use all the techniques I've learned over the years and help you. Grab your hot chocolate and make sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Ciao. Hello, it's Dr. Divi from the podcast, Ease to Clarity. And thank you so much for being here. So today we're going to be doing a couple email questions that came in from our listeners. So thank you so much for sending them. As you probably remember, I did a series on body not too long ago, and I got three questions in on body and please feel free to send more in. So I gave you guys the option that if you had some body issues yourself or a family member, you want to get a sense of what the metaphysical energetic components were, I'm happy to help you. So the two, I've got three, one on miscarriages, one on sciatica, and one on irritable bowel syndrome. So I'm going to the irritable bowel and the, um, and the sciatica today and the miscarriages because it's a little bit um, different and deeper on a different level. We'll do that next, next time. All right, let us have some fun. But before we begin, go ahead and close your eyes. And if you're driving, you're not going to close your eyes and take a few breaths. As we sit in a few seconds of meditation together, I invite you to imagine, sense, see, or feel that you're not this body. I know we think we are this body. What if I'm inviting you to imagine that you are the consciousness of the I am? You are the light. You are the divine. You are the spark as a child of God. The thoughts you think by the act of free will are manifestation. All you are is consciousness. This body is a meat suit. It's temporary. And it's just for us to play the game of life to elevate our consciousness. So breathe into that thought for a few minutes. I am not this body. And before I take you to the next part, I would love you to imagine that this body is my, recept my, my receptor, my communication device to what my consciousness or thoughts are doing. So as we move into today's podcast, am I open to becoming aware of what the signals of my body are doing as I speak of these two illnesses that also impact millions of people around the world? Take a few more breaths. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes coming back. So let's do irritable bowel first. This question comes from one of my favorite clients, Joelle, who I haven't seen for a while. So hi, Joelle. I hope you're doing super well. Um, I miss you and love you very much. And thank you so much for a beautiful question. So I met Joelle in her healing journey a number of years ago. And by now she's had 20 years of IBS. I'm just pulling up her message and I'm going to summarize it. So she recently um, decided to go off all her naturopathic supplements because she realized it ain't working. She's been doing this for a long time. And she asked her guys to help her understand what's going on with her gut issues. And she had this thought out of nowhere, her intuition telling her she should show herself more love. And, and then she realized, oh, wow, I've got a very strong inner critic. That's very dominant. And she's wondering if there's a link between her inner critic and her irritable bowel syndrome and what my thoughts are on that. So let us begin. Thank you for this question, Joelle. So let's just talk about your, what irritable bowel syndrome is, and then um, I'll dive in. So please listen to this, to this if you have any health issues, because you're going to see a lot of parallels because IBS is a pretty common thing. Irritable bowel syndrome or IBS is a condition where the, the small intestine and large intestine just kind of spasm whenever they want. That's how we, we always taught in medical school. And the symptoms can often be bloating, constipation, diarrhea, a stomach aches on and off, and just not feeling well, right? Fatigue, all those kinds of fun things. IBS is not fun. 
And um, if you talk to Western, med med Western trained physicians, we'll tell you we don't know why they ha happens. There's lots of theories and there's lots of trial medications that people try that hit and miss. Some people respond, some don't. In general, as most of us know who listen to my podcast, a lot of illnesses that are termed idiopathic, which is a word for we don't know, um, are simply because we can't come up with a firm reason why this person got this illness. Versus, for example, when you have, say, appendicitis, we may not know why you've got it, but we know what to do. We have to cut it out, right? If you have cystic fibrosis, well, we can, um, you know, say, oh, you've got the genetic thing for this, right? And again, Western medicine can help amazingly with certain things and then takes us only so far. And that's where the rest of the work I do, metaphysically and energetic, comes in as my preamble. So as most of you know, when it comes to anything with the body, I'm always a big believer of listening to your intuition. If your intuition says, go see a physician, go see an apotropath, go do it. But people always end up coming to me when they've kind of exhausted all those remedies. And one of the big teachings I offer a lot of people is intuitive, emotional, spiritual guidance, a lot based on energy work and of course miracles. And what I keep seeing in your body, Joelle, but especially in your stomach, and hopefully this helps anybody else with IBS, I keep seeing almost like a twist knot right in the center of your body, right below your solar plexus. It's like, she, they keep saying she doesn't believe in herself, hence the inner critic. But it's not any, that you don't believe in yourself, but the, the worthiness has always been exterior. So if I get an A in school, if I get this done, if I have some kids, if I get married, and as you know, because you're older, um, you know, we always keep pushing that bar further away. When then, when then, when then? And that's what the ego is screaming at you, that you're not enough, that you're only worthy then. And it literally is contracting our stomachs because it's bringing fight, flight, freeze. So yes, I think you're bang on in the connection between your inner critic and, and your IBS. But I'd add to that, any fear that you're not enough is 100% related to irritable bowel syndrome. Any fear that there's something wrong with you is connected to irritable bowel syndrome. A genetic isn't connected, it is. So reminder, here we are in spirit, my ring hand, and here we are in the ego consciousness. The first block of the ego, or the first um, principle of the ego, the first um, belief of the ego is that you are separate from God. You are separated from the divine. And that separation then creates a, the first one, which creates sadness. And then it creates a second belief, which is attachment that I want this to feel better. I want to have kids to feel better. I want to have this house to feel better. I want this degree to feel better. And then, and then, and then. So the attachment creates frustration and anger. And then as a result of wanting that BMW, that kid, that house, we welcome and control. And then control creates fear. Now, IBS is normally a disease of immense fear. But if you take it all back, it's fear because you are in charge of getting the kid, the house, the this, the that thinking that that's when I will be whole, but you go from um, control, which is fear, back to attachment, which is frustration, back to separation, which is lack and sadness. And ultimately it all comes down to Joelle and to everybody listening to this idea that you are separate from the divine. So go ahead and close your eyes for a sec. We'll do a mini meditation. I want you to see your body, but for a minute, I don't want you to see yourself as a body. I want you to see yourself as a light being. For those of us who are older and remember Star Trek, and it was like, beam me up, Scotty. You would see like this beautiful light beam from 300 feet above your head, right down to the middle of planet Earth. Just see that light beam. And breathe. I'd like you to imagine that you are this consciousness of light, not this little body that is separate. You are this consciousness of spirit. And just breathe into that visual for a few minutes. Now from that light beam, I'd like you to imagine, sense, see, or feel all the guides, all the ascended masters, the divine mother, there you go. The energies of non-physical, the energies of unconditional love. Just go there for a few minutes with your breath. You are holy with a W, holy connected, and a holy, H O L I, connected to all that is. You're not separate. You're not apart. 
you are one. And take a few breaths. I swear. And I want you to just feel how your body feels, your physical body and your mental body. Take a big, deep breath. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Healing the idea of separation is not a one-off thing. Oh, okay, I'm not separate. I'm a child of God. It's this never-ending journey of seeing the oneness of life. Seeing that tree. Seeing that plant. Seeing that grass as me. And it's a bit of a mind, F-U-C-K. But it's that work every day of just seeing myself as an extension of spirit. So that's one thing I want you to work on, Joelle. And the other piece I want you to play with when it comes to inner critic is all of these quote unquote shatters or unconscious patterns. They are formed, and I know you know this from fight, flight, freeze. And they just think they're trying to help you. So that inner critic isn't going to go away just from that meditation we did. She's still going to yap and go, why haven't you saved enough money or whatever it's going to say. So I want you to see that inner critic. And if you've never worked with Kuan Yin, Kuan Yin, K-U-A-N, next word Y-I-N, she's a Buddhist Hindu goddess of compassion. So I want you to see that inner critic standing directly in front of you. And I want you to imagine Kuan Yin's energy standing directly behind you. She is the energy of compassion and unconditional love. So imagine Kuan Yin's energy coming into your body and sending compassion and love to your inner critic. You're not trying to change the inner critic. You're not trying to get rid of it. You're trying to have compassion for it. There you go. Good, 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 good. And just keep breathing. And now the third technique. So first technique we did was not seeing yourself as separate. The second technique was bringing in Kuan Yin. And the third technique, which is forgiveness, is really the ultimate. So forgiveness is not, I forgive dad for hitting me. Forgiveness is forgiving me for, like, forgive, forgiving the thought that I'm separate from the divine or a returning to who I truly am. So when you have those inner critical thoughts, bring in the divine mother and just give her those thoughts the Divine Mother, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to, word you want to use, whatever angel you want to work with, give her the thoughts. It's her job to do the forgiveness. Of course, Miracles teaches that the Holy Spirit is a feminine energy. And you have to give those thoughts of unforgiveness to her. And she will transmute them. So every time that inner critic thought comes up, just give them to her. Anytime those self-negative um, belief systems come up, give them to her. And maybe say statements like the whole Ho'oponopono. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and thank you. I love you, higher self. I'm sorry for ever thinking this thought. Please forgive me and thank you. Just keep repeating it. Or a forgiveness prayer like forgiveness set me and everyone free. So visualize the Divine Mother standing in front of you and giving her those inner critic thoughts. And there you go. And the more you practice that, the more you will find release, relief. And just keep breathing into that. Nice work. Amazing question, Joelle. I'm going to guarantee that helped a lot of people. So thank you. And Joelle, I would love it if you dropped me an email back and let me know how this landed for you. All right. Let me pull the other question. Really great question. Now I want you to see how that can apply to a lot of people. So again, if you've got health issue going on or just something else going on, you want me to tune into or answer a question. The questions have a lot of meat to them. All right. So let's imagine to take a stretch break. Shake that one off as we go to the second question. So the second question was from Krista. I have to grab my glasses out. Okay, so Krista asks the question. Um, so she is a left-handed woman. I asked her this question. She's a left-handed woman, okay? And so she wrote, um, doo -doo -doo. Um, can you talk about sciatica pain? I struggle with it. And I hear a lot of people struggle with it. I'm wondering what this may be affected to as far as my thought systems and emotion that are creating the pain. Then I emailed her back and I said, what side it is right or left? And she said, left side. And I asked her after what hand she, what hand she's dominant. She said, left handed. So let me explain why that is. Okay. So then I'll tune into you in a second, Krista. So if you are right-handed, the right side of your body is masculine and the left side of your body is feminine. If your dominant left hand, left-handed dominant writing, 
then the left side of your body is masculine and the right side of your body is feminine. So Krista, the sciatica is on the masculine side of your body. Okay. Now sciatica is typically, it varies person to person, but it's the sciatic nerve, which if you don't know, I hope you've never, people have never had this, who've never experienced sciatica. It's like right under your butt cheek and it pinches and it shoots because of the shooting pain down the th back of the thigh. It's not fun. It's a nerve pain. It's not fun. And typically it's related to like lower back issues being tight. So what I would look at, Chris, I'm going to say about 20 things or 10, I don't know. And we'll see what comes out of my mouth, but it's like, um, it's, it's like one of two sides of a teeter totter. Either where am I approaching life more fearful from the masculine? Because again, the left side for you, Krista, is masculine. And you want to move forward in certain areas of your life, but there's fear and you're holding yourself back. And so either there's like, you're not allowed because the hips and sciatic pain is about moving forward in life. Got it? So leg issues are typically hips and leg, hips, which is sciatic typically, is like, I want to move forward. I want to step forward. Life path, career, partnership, whatever. So where am I being hesitant to move forward in life? What are my fears about moving forward in life? Because those, oh, I just felt it. Those fears will get stuck in that sciatic nerve. So I'm going to do this side before the other side. And so, for example, if I'm like a masculine thing is I'm afraid of making a mistake. I'm afraid of getting it wrong. I'm afraid that, you know, I'm afraid there's not enough money. I'm afraid there's like, it's a control thing that I can feel in your head. And then that's going to affect the sciatica. And what you do with all those thoughts is that forgiveness work again. Every, every thought is a thought form and a thought form that is different from the divine I am is of the ego thought system. And the ego thought system that's afraid to step forward and trying to control you because it's the masculine side of you is creating this pain. Okay. And I'll go to the other side of that, like the teeter-totter in a second. And when you discovered, and I'm going to name a bunch of other thoughts on the other teeter-totter in a second, and you'll know, Krista, what thoughts resonate to you, right? So I've mentioned a few, afraid to step forward, um, you know, fear that you're going to make a mistake, money, like trying to control, like, you know, too afraid to step forward. And so um, what you do when any of these resonate with you is you give them to my mother and ask for forgiveness. Because, you know, when it comes to a deeper level of this work of non-doership, spirit wants to have her expression through your body, Krista, and have her experience through this body, having the experience of the life of what Krista's meant to do. And Krista's fears are stopping her. So those fears are being um, located in your sciatic nerve. And so what you do is you want to give them to the divine and just say, forgiveness, set me free from this thought. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And thank you. Forgive me for these thoughts that are holding me back. And you just keep giving them and giving them and giving them. And that's one side of the teeter-totter. The other side of the teeter-totter might be that you're too hyper-masculine. Like you're, you're like, I got to push, I got to push, I got to push. I don't think that's you energetically, but this is, I just have to say this to be complete. It's like, I got to push, I got to push, I got to work hard. Do, 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 do. And if, you, if that resonates with you, then you have to forgive that extra pushing because it's that push that doesn't balance with, in your case, the right side, which in your case is the feminine. So look, and Chris, I would love an email back to see what resonates with you, but it's almost what I feel in your energy body is this almost fear to step forward into your divine power. And that fear is holding the, the sad, um, the SI joint back or right in your nice butt cheek back. And it's like, I want to move forward. And you're like, no, I'm scared. And then you don't step forward. And then that fear then creates the pain in your body. And so you want to forgive that thought that you're in charge. Forgive the thought that you've control. Forgive the thought that you're scared, <laughs> which is normal. Forgive the thought that you think you're in charge of your life, blah, blah, blah. Because I also heard that her fear is that something bad's going to happen and that it won't work out and that she'll make a mistake. So forgiving all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So please, again, Krista, just like um, Joelle, message me back. Let me know as it goes. Whew. So let's close our eyes. Good questions today. Really good questions. Take a few breaths. Remembering our body is an outpouring of our thoughts and emotions. Our body appears real, but it's a chem it's molecules in motion. They're just giving us messages. And I'm just going to add one or two more things before I wrap. The I am work uh, discourses by St. Germain teach us that when we say the words, I am whatever, we are declaring it to the world. So for Joelle and Krista and everybody else, I am 
the fulfillment of life. I am the healing consciousness of the divine. I am the God consciousness that can move through my cells and my body and heal in miraculous ways. I am the peace of the divine that can create and open and share and shift and create miracles. I am the connection of all that is. So taking those affirmations into your body and letting them land. Nice work, everybody. I'm sending you lots of love. Thank you for these questions. And again, if you have more, feel free to send me emails at easeintoclarity at gmail.com. My next one, I'll be speaking about miscarriages and having fun with that one too. Sending you lots of love. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me in this podcast, Ease Into Clarity. It is such a joy, pleasure, and honor to be in your living room. What I would love is if you follow me on Instagram, drdivi, or go to my website, drdivi.com, or write a review. That would be even more amazing. Thank you. If you really enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share it with friends, family, tell them to follow me, because I think the more of us that listen to the fact that we, each of us, can start to shift, each of us can shift mental things, emotional things, spiritual shift to shift our daily reality. When more and more of us do it, we get a better planet. We get more love. We get more happiness. We get more joy. So I'd love it if you followed. I'd love if you change, if you shared this because it would be such a joy and an honor. And again, if you have a question, guess what? I'm here for you. So send me an email, easeintoclarity at gmail.com. And as they come in, I will answer them in podcasts that are subsequent, whether it be your boss, your relationship, your husband, whatever. That's what I'm here for. Because the more of us that learn really simple mental techniques, really simple spiritual techniques, we change the physical reality we live in. Pretty soon we have more peace, more ease, more joy trickling across the whole world. Remember, there's a spiritual solution for every problem. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.